Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Java Interview Buddy. So in this video, I am going to share some real interview questions shared by one of our subscriber. His name is Sumit. So Sumit recently faced an interview at Accenture and he has around three years of experience. He shared all the questions with us. So in this video, I will go through each question one by one and explain them in a simple way. And if you also faced any interview recently, please share your questions with us. You can fill out the form in the description. It really helps others too. Also, if you want to prepare with me in a mock interview session, you can fill the same form for that as well. All right, so let's start the video. So the interview started with a Spring Boot question and the question was, what is the difference between Spring and Spring Boot? To answer this, you can say something like Spring is a core framework that provides features like dependency injection and AOP, but the setup part was manual. We had to write XML files for the configuration. Spring Boots makes the process automatic. It provides auto configuration, starter dependency and an embedded server. So with Spring Boot, you can create a production ready application with a very minimal setup. The interviewer might also ask how you used Spring Boot in your project. You can say that in your project, you use Spring Boot to build microservices. Each service has its own controller, service and repository layer. You also use profiles for different environments like dev, QA and prod. Auto configuration helped us to reduce manual bean setup. Then we move to the next question. This one was from Core Java. And the question is, what is the difference between abstract class and interface? So here, how you can explain this? An abstract class can have both abstract and non-abstract methods. An interface on the other hand can only have abstract methods. But since Java 8, you can also have defaults and static methods. We use abstract class when classes share common behavior. And we use an interface when we want to define a contract that multiple classes can implement. They might ask which one you use more in your project or your microservices. You can say that mostly interfaces are used because we define service interfaces and then implement them in a service layer for loose coupling. And next the interviewer switch to the Java 8 topic. What are the function interfaces and why they are useful? To answer this, you can say a functional interface has exactly one abstract method. It used with Lambda expressions in Java 8. For example, you can say predicate, function, consumer. So basically, Function interfaces allow us to treat behavior as a data. They might also ask how you use lambda expression in your project. You can say that you use lambda expression in stream operation, especially for filtering, mapping and sorting the data coming from the APIs or databases. So here on the screen, you can see the example of a function interface. It has a single abstract method and it is used with a lambda expression after that there was a spring boot question the question was what are the starter dependencies in spring boot now to answer this you can say spring boot starters are like uh, predefined dependency sets that simplify configuration for example instead of adding multiple individual dependencies for web project you just add a spring boot starter web it automatically brings everything like Spring MVC, Tomcat, Jack, uh, Jackson. So basically it saves times and avoid version conflicts as well. As a follow up question, they might ask like uh, which starter did you use in your project? You can say I use Spring Boot Starter Web or Spring Boot Starter Data JPA or uh, Spring Boot Starter Actuator like for monitoring purpose. For the next question they have they asked a microservice question, which is what is spring, what is service discovery in microservices? Now it is a very common question. And to answer this question, you can say something like, you can say something like uh, service discovery helps microservices find each other dynamically. So instead of uh, using hard coded URLs, it is very useful when services scale up and down. So in spring cloud, we commonly use Eureka server for uh, service discovery. Each service registered itself with Eureka and other services fetch details from it. So as you can see on this diagram, there is service A and service A is calling Eureka servers to get the information about the service B. 
there is service A and there is service B. Both services are registering themselves and sending their details to Eureka server. And then wherever any service want to communicate with other service, for example, service A want to communicate with the service B, it will contact the Eureka server. And as a follow up question, they might ask something like, how did you implement Eureka in your project? If you go into that detail, so you can say that we have a dedicated Eureka server. So each service registered itself using enable Eureka client annotation and we use service names instead of host name in our rest calls. Then came a coding related question, which is uh, write a Java 8 stream code to filter even number from a list and print them. So this is a very simple problem using Java 8 stream API you can solve that. So as you can see on the screen there is a code for it and in this code we just created a list by using as list method we provided some integers into this list. It's a list of integer basically. Now we are converting this list into a stream using the stream method then we are using the filter method which is an intermediate method which is accepting a predicate this predicate is basically telling about the condition like what condition need to fulfill so here we have a condition like we need to have even numbers only so in that case it will find the even number for you because if, if there is an even number the reminder will be zero so this condition will give only even number then there is a terminal operation called for each and this for each operation will uh, print all the numbers for you. So this code creates a list. It uses a stream filter and then filter even number and then print them one by one. So you can simply tell this answer if you, anyone asks about this question. And there are multiple questions in Java 8 stream API. Possibility is unlimited. Like there are multiple follow up questions are there like they can ask can we collect them into a list instead of printing it? So instead of uh, like using the for each, uh, you can use something like collect dot collector and the to list. So you can collect the integers into a list. And guys, a quick reminder for you. If you also face any Java interview recently, please share your questions with us. You can fill out the form in the description. And if you want to join our mock interview session, you can use the same form. We will schedule it one for you. Then the interviewer moved to a project based question, which is, can you explain how you structure your microservice project? So you can start your answer like this. Each service followed a standard three layer structure, controller, service and repository. The controller handles REST requests. The service layer contains business logic and the repository layer interacted with the databases using JPA. We also use DTOs to transfer data between layers. For configuration, we use application YAML with environment profiles. They might also ask like, how did you handle configuration for multiple environment? You can say we use separate YAML files like application dev YAML, application QA YAML, application prod YAML or application prod properties, dev properties, something like that and activated them using the spring profile, spring.profiles.active property. Next, there was another Java question. What is the difference between hash map and concurrent hash map? Now the answer will be hash map is not thread safe. If multiple threads modify it, you may get inconsistent data. Concurrent hash map is thread safe that allows concurrent reads and controlled writes. That means you can concurrently read the data and write the data as well. It doesn't block the entire map. It locks only specific segments internally. So it performs better in multi-threaded environments. They might also ask like where did you use concurrent hash map in your project? You can say we use it in caching modules where multiple threads reads and write the data simultaneously. Then came another Spring Boot question. What is the purpose of REST controller annotation in Spring Boot? So I will tell you how you can explain this. REST controller is a combination of controller and response body. It used to create RESTful web services that returns JSON or XML responses. And when you use it, Spring automatically converts the return object into JSON. So you don't need to add response body separately for each method. As you can see on the screen, there is an example of REST controller I have shared with you. This is a very basic REST controller. 
Now for the follow up question, they might ask like, when do we use controller instead of rest controller? I mean, just opposite of that question. So you can say that when you are returning a web page like JSON or theme leaf, some kind of a web page, you use controller for APIs that returning JSON, you can use rest controller. And after that, the interviewer jumped to a microservices question. The question was, how do microservices communicate with each other? Well, you can start your answer something like this. Microservices can communicate using REST APIs or message brokers. For simple synchronous calls, we use REST with tools like Fang Client or REST template. For asynchronous communication, we use messaging queues like Kafka and RabbitMQ. In our project, mostly we use REST for internal services call because the REST template is most commonly used. Now they might ask like which one is better, synchronous or asynchronous? communication so you can say synchronous is easier to manage but asynchronous improves scalability and performance when you don't need an immediate response okay so the next question was what is the difference between map and flat map now these both are intermediate methods in uh, java 8 map transforms each element into another form while flat map flattens the nested structure like list inside list for example, if you have a list of lists, uh, flat map helps you to convert it into a single stream of elements. On the screen, I will show you the example code for it, where we are having a list which is having another list, multiple lists inside that. So in, when we use flat map with it, it, it will give a, a single list which will have all the elements from all the lists inside it. Now they, they can also ask like, where did you use flat map or map in your project? So you can say we used map to transforming DTOs to entities and flat map for flattening the nested responses from the APIs. So it's very optional. If you have used it, you can say I have used in this purpose. And if you haven't used these things, you can say clearly that uh, we haven't used that. Then they switch to a project specific question again. So how do you handle exceptions in your Spring Boot application? Now this is very very important question. Many interviews they are asking this question right now. And to answer this question you can simply say that we use global exception handler with controller advice annotation inside it. So we define methods annotated with exception handler to handle specific exceptions. Like this help us to uh, send clean and consistent error responses for the client. We also log errors using loggers like log4j and or uh, maybe slf4j. So on the screen you can see the example code I have shared with you which is a global exceptional handler. It is annotated with the controller advice and there is a method called handle all. The handle all method is annotated with exceptional handler annotation. Basically what it is, it is handling all type of exception and uh, giving the custom response. We can give, I mean we can give our own custom responses as well. Instead of giving predefined code, we can give we can give a custom message as well. They may dig deeper into it and they ask like why is global exception handling better? You can say because it avoids duplicate try catch blocks in every controller. So if we don't use a global exception handler, we have to write multiple try and catch blocks each and every places. I mean in the controller layer. So we can avoid that by using this thing by using the exceptional handling on the Spring Boot level with the controller advice and exception handler. And it also make our response structure consistent across the services. Now next the interviewer asked about the uh, application properties. The question was what is the difference between application properties and application YAML in Spring Boot. You can simply answer this by saying that uh, both are used for the configuration but YAML format is more readable and structured. YAML support a hierarchy uh, which makes it cleaner compared to the properties. So if you have worked with application YAML files or application properties files, you can see that application YAML files are more readable, more clearer, more structured way. Uh, functionally, both work the same. I mean, Spring Boot can read either of them, but most teams prefer YAML for environment-based configuration. Now they might ask you in this question like, 
which one do you use in your project and why you can say we used yaml because it was easier to manage multiple environments like dev q and prod in a single file you can manage that but if you have used application properties you can also say that we have used application properties and application environment specific file for each and every uh, environment then there was uh, another uh, spring boot question how do you secure your rest apis in spring boot so basically this question is about spring security we secure rest apis using spring security because it is nowadays most commonly used so we if you have if you read about spring security you can tell that uh, we secured request apis using spring security because it allows authentication and authorization at different levels you can configure it using the basic auth or jwt tokens or oot 2.0 now oot 2.0 or jwt token is the most common way of uh, securing your web application so uh, like you can say something like in our project we use jwt based security for all internal microservices now if you answer this you might get a follow up question something like how does the uh, jwt authentication works so you can say that when a user login a token is generated and sent back for every request that token is passed in the header and, and the server validates it before processing and finally there was a database related question the question was how do you connect your spring boot application with databases so you can simply answer this by saying that uh, we define database connection uh, properties like url username and password in application yaml file then we use spring data jpa uh, to interact with the databases spring boot automatically creates the data sources and entity manager you just create a repository extending uh, either jpa repository or curd repository or uh, maybe you have used mongo db so mongo repository so it handles all the curd operations automatically after that now they might ask like what database did you use so whatever databases you have used in your project like mysql postgres or uh, oracle or mongodb anything you can tell because the same like if you use mysql the same set of works for the postgres or oracle as well just uh, we need to change the property configuration in our application property and of course the dependencies will be different for each and every dependency yeah so that was all from this interview i hope these questions and answer ha will help you to understand like what what kind of a topics being asked and if you like this video make sure you subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends who are preparing for the interviews and don't forget if you want to share your own interview questions or your, your interview experience or join our uh, mock interview session just fill out the form in the description see you in the next video